right, just a quick thank you to everybody who's here so far. This is an opportunity for me. It's a bit of a dream opportunity because it gives me the chance to showcase the brilliant women who make Uvaro possible. Um, and the reality is the, the, each of these individuals who I'm gonna be speaking with, uh, starting with Jenna today uh, and over the course of, of this week, next week, really are individuals who have driven their own career success. And so the ability to highlight some of their uh, experiences is really special for me as I get the honor to work with these individuals uh, on a day-by-day -day basis. So you can join us today, 2 p.m. I know I said 4 p.m. last week. I was wrong. Bronte corrected me. So thank you for doing that. Uh, but next week at 4 p.m. was will be our next, next conversation as well. And I cannot emphasize enough that each of these conversations is with individuals who are here, not because of happenstance. They've, they're here as a result of their own actions and decisions. And so the ability to showcase their journeys and career success is uh, exactly why I'm here. This last week, uh, so I actually started this series with Alex Parks, the head of our career programming. And we talked about why understanding your why is so critical to career success. We kicked that off. Uh, and then last week, I got the chance to speak with Elena, who heads up our, our sales uh, side of the business about overcoming performance blocks. Today, I'm here with Jenna Trong, our CFO, uh, to talk about the next step in that kind of career development process, as I'm sure you can imagine. So today, we're going to be talking about the power of community um, and specifically how to create community and how creating community contributes to your own career success as well. Uh, I know Jenna's been so patient <laughs> sitting here. If I may, Jenna, just steal a couple more minutes to introduce you before kicking things off. How does that work? That's great. Awesome. awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so prior to this conversation, I did go to Google and look up the definition of community to help frame things up. And according to Google, the definition is that it's a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. And uh, after reading that definition, it actually really stuck with me because as somebody who works with both longtime friends as well as family members, I would have said that I felt a deep sense of community in the workplace. Um, but what's wild about that is I don't think it was until after you joined that I began to really think of myself as being a community member, uh, which is really interesting. It's an interesting experience for me. And I was speaking with my partner about that, uh, reflecting on it. And, you know, just in the past two months, you've inspired me to read business books. I've joked about it. It's real. I have spent nearly 35 years trying to avoid that. And, and I can see myself growing uh, as a result. And, and that's fantastic. I'm more comfortable um, thinking about myself in a business context, and I feel more confident when sharing my perspectives. And so when given the opportunity to speak with you, Jenna, uh, of course, it's such a, such a privilege and, and so honored to do that because in such a short time, you've enriched my community uh, here at Uvaro. And I've seen the positive impacts as a result of that. And I think you and I both know that nobody achieves success in a vacuum and uh, community is so critical to, to career success. So having benefited from you being a part of my community, the chance to talk about it is, is really special. So I'd love to start things off uh, just with a general, general question. I think I've, I've taken up enough space for people to join us, which is great. Um, what got you here today? And how do you describe community in a professional context? Thanks so much, Donna. I, I am honestly not deserving of the compliments you've paid to me and um, the community you've built here at Uvaro is one I'm, I'm super lucky to be joining. Um, what got me here today, honestly, I think it's a combination of a little bit of curiosity, a lot of luck, um, certainly community, as well as purpose. I, I spent a lot of time, especially over the last few years, reflecting on the work that I wanted to do and the thread of commonality I found across, you know, nonprofit, private equity, consulting, tech. It's that I always felt the most fulfilled or happy when I had the ability to develop the potential of those around me, either directly being in the community we had in the workplace or indirectly being the work that we achieved as a community. And that's a critical piece that I think really enabled me to find the place where I could show up authentically um, because the underlying values were already aligned. Um, for community and uh, how I would define it in a professional context, it's 
it's kind of the people you surround yourself with that have shared values, um, purpose, which I talked about, but really it's, you know, your peers and allies, mentors and mentees, sponsors, um, partners, internal and external to the workplace. And it's actually people that I believe truly see you. They see your potential and they want to enable and support you because you share in that vision and mission. Awesome. Uh, thank, thank you. I think that's, uh, I think there's, there's, there's so many different threads to pull on, which, which I love so much. Uh, in your answer, you mentioned being able to show up authentically. Um, that's a significant thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. Um, so I'd love to know what are some, how did you learn how to show up authentically? How did you know you were doing it? Honestly, I think that one of the best books I've ever read is from Brené Brown and it's called Daring Greatly. She talks a lot about how authenticity, authenticity in the workplace can only really show up when you're vulnerable. And for me, that vulnerability was truly empowering and it really strengthens your, your relationships in the workplace. Um, if you're honest about what you can and cannot do, it also enables you to surround yourself with the right people, um, which also means you're finding the right sort of sponsorship as well. Um, even for me in my own experience, I remember experiencing sponsorship in a very public way. I, I was a junior analyst when I joined the private equity firm and two months into my role was given an opportunity not only to prepare consolidated financials, um, which I'd never done in my life at the time, but beyond that, I was given a chance to present to the financials to our investment holdings and it was a high caliber experience board of directors. It's being able to be put into positions of opportunity like this that gives you that ne necessary opportunity for advancement. Awesome. Thank you. And I can see that the, uh, the book was shared there as well. Thank you so much. Um, I love the fact that like what you've just described is being able to know and be authentic is almost in those heat moments. We describe those heat moments as mm -hmm. high intensity, you know, high risk of failure uh, with a lot of, you know, the important people or, or people who, who uh, uh, could pass judgment for in different reasons. Um, and so what are some how has community helped you be strong enough to participate in those experiences? Yeah, I, I think that when you have people that recognize the way you show up and all of your imperfections included, it allows you to be courageous in a way and bold in a way that you couldn't do alone. To be honest, I, I think it allows you to also pull on different levers of support to enable you to do the work that you're really proud of. I, I think a lot of times, even as a young professional, I experienced moments where I didn't lean in and understand the true power of community because I was so wound up and actually um, super hard on myself on trying to impress people around me rather than feeling impressed with myself and proud of the work that I was doing. So leading with that perspective actually drove me to cultivate um, more personal relationships that ended up being beneficial on both sides. Yeah, I, I love that, that idea of, of not necessarily, you know, or the way you define yourself. Do you define yourself by your gaps or do you define yourselves by your, by your strengths? And, and it sounds like really until you were able to think of yourself uh, in terms of the strengths, you didn't necessarily recognize that the power of the community was, was there to support you. Does that sound about right? That's totally it. And honestly, one, one big advantage I received um, through community was actually, again, through a sponsor. Um, a lot of times a good sponsor, they can spot strengths you're not even aware of because they're things that are underdeveloped within you. Um, and they also see those strengths that could add value in areas of business that you haven't yet explored. So being able to develop strong relationships there really do propel and help you accelerate your own career trajectory. Awesome. Um, sponsors. What is a sponsor? How do I find them? And how do I make them like me? <laughs> It, it, it's such a hard thing, you know, I, it, and it's it, it, it's something I'm learning the difference between mentorship and sponsorship. I think mentorship is one where you get a lot of 
guidance and it's a lot of direct advice and areas where you can self-improve. But sponsorship is actually a lot of times over, I believe it's someone who's laying their reputation on the line and making sure that you are in fact visible so that you have the opportunities for advancement and growth. Um, in order to find them, again, I think it, it, it's in part making the ask and seeking out people that definitely share in your core purpose. A lot of that has to do with vulnerability, um, telling your own personal story and sharing things that really bring you closer together, I think allows you to form more genuine relationships. Um, and that's also uh, being present on your own end and knowing what you bring to the relationship. A lot of times sponsorship, it, it's not a one-way street, you know, people will see opportunities and value that you can bring. And so that's an opportunity for you to rise and also help the other person in growing their business or ensuring that their reputation remains intact. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So much of what we what we spend time with, with our customers is talking about, well, what's your why um, at the very outset. And uh, what I love so much about the themes that you're bringing up is that it's it's just, it's all so related. Being vulnerable, recognizing your strengths, your weaknesses is the other side of the coin of knowing what you're motivated by and what your purpose is. Um, and so for somebody who is potentially going through our, our program and they're just hearing these concepts for the first time and they're thinking, oh my gosh, I got to find a sponsor, I got to be vulnerable, I got to do all these things. What's a really great way to just start? Yeah, I, I think it's really just about getting out there to see what is there and being really intentional in the people that you are reaching out to and the why for why you're reaching out to them. Um, another thing is, I, I think that a lot of people benefit from self-reflection and introspection. It's, it's actually how I discovered um, my own core purpose and the work that I was doing. How come in certain jobs I loved um, and others I hated took a lot of time to understand. And a lot of times they're also deeply rooted in who you are. So I think finding time to figure out your personal story also helps you drive and create momentum in your professional life. Um, a story I've shared with you before, Donna, um, and definitely um, would love to share here is, you know, the story about my mom. Um, I remember being seven or eight years old. We had just moved cities and we were driving from place to place, factory to factory. And my mom was looking for work. She would run in, she'd grab an application, hop into the car and she'd pass it to me. And it wasn't until that moment in time that I realized that my mother was illiterate. It was a super humbling and grounding moment in my life where I really recognized what privilege really meant and what responsibility we had um, to really pay it forward. Um, my mom, you know, provided so much to me and I, I, I believe that that's what enabled me to really want to develop the potential in others as well. Um, I love that. I, I love that story. And thank you so much for sharing. I think it's incredibly relevant uh, in this in this context as well, because it it is all related. Uh, the idea of figuring out what are those what are those universal truths? What are those themes that you've carried from, you know, when you were tiny tot since inception through to who you are now as an adult, which is really just a great big kid. Um, figuring out those those kernels is hard work and it's easy to brush it off. So easy to brush it off. Um, and I think what you said is, is create, find the time, find the time to do it. Um, and that can happen in, you know, the shower, it can happen at any, in any, in any moment or circumstance, but it is important to carve it out. So I love, I love the fact that you've raised that. Thank you. Um, I'd love to know how, so community, you said, you said it, it's, it's both ways, right? It's you for the sponsorship, you know, you're helping them, they're helping you. Um, how can I be a good community member? How can I give back? Yeah, absolutely. I think first and foremost, it's really understanding the needs of your peers within your community. Um, a lot of that has to do with taking the time to form those personal and meaningful connections. Another thing that I think um, that really enables you to really give back and pay it forward is 
to lose that sense of entitlement. A lot of times it's easy to kind of carry that in. And, you know, I think that if we operate with the perspective of just because you work with someone, it, it doesn't mean they're required to do something for you, right? It, you need to act like they're just as much volunteering their time. It's their choice to invest that time to support you and they can easily slow you down or speed up your business. Um, and I think if you approach people in that sense, then you, you also can figure out um, and enable really transparent and candid conversations um, that are super productive. I like that. I like how you started um, understanding the needs of the peers in your community. Um, and so when I think about our community and uh, the, the individuals who are participating, it's, you and I are as much a part of it. Uh, it's our instructors, but most importantly, it's our customers. And so if you think about our customers, and we're taking, taking one of our programs or workshops, how can they begin to understand the needs of their peers? Mm. You know what? I think that it always starts with initiating conversation and being available to listen. I, I'm probably sounding a little repetitive here, but a lot of times I think that people are afraid to show vulnerability. Um, you're afraid to speak up about things that you care about. You're afraid to speak up about diversity and inclusion because you might be afraid of saying something wrong. And um, there's so many different interests. And I think that it just starts with making um, yourself available to have the conversation, being open to questions, being open to learning. And, and that's how you really begin. I love it. Um, tactically, uh, I, I, I love getting to that place where people can, can take away ways and, and strategies to implement in their own lives. And so um, being open, asking to listen, not being afraid to speak up or being willing to speak up um, being able to, to lose that sense of entitlement. So approaching a conversation um, from that perspective of just because you're in the same classroom together um, doesn't necessarily mean that anyone owes each other anything. I think that that is a, it's a healthy starting point because what it does is it, it opens you up to listening and hearing what other people need uh, so that you can then support as opposed to assuming what it is that they might need. And, and all of these are just, you know, very nuanced soft skills but ultimately create that community that sense of community which um you know is, is so important to to propel us forward and help give us that strength um so thank you i think those are all very very uh salient and, and excellent tips um i know i have a bunch of questions and you've been really fantastic about letting me go off script so i'll bring us back to the list that i shared with you so thank you um i'd love to know what uh, we've talked a little bit about already about the role of community in your in in your journey. So I'd like to to understand what are some of the key relationships that you've been able to um, create for yourself to get you to where you are today. Mm -hmm. I'd say that you know well outside of professional context, it's certainly family and friends that have really provided a lot of support. But um, in the professional workplace, I think that the key relationships it it's actually everyone in the workplace. Um, I, I think that people really discount the impact that a single individual has when introduced into a community and whether or not they adapt to the norms and forms. Um, a lot of times I like to give a, a terrible <laughs> analogy, um, but it, it's really just remembering that you're always a part of it. Um, and, you know, it, the analogy that I like to give, it's a horrible one, Donna, so don't get mad, but it, it it's, it's actually has to do with making coffee. You know, you can start with two very simple ingredients, espresso and milk. You combine them in very different ways and you can get a latte, a cappuccino, a flat white, a macchiato, but it, it's all dependent on how much you put into it that makes, that makes all the difference. Um, so I, I think remembering how individuals impact community is super important, but the ones that I, I've been able to develop is a lot of times my, my peers and the, the direct reports that I had were the most important. Uh, a lot of times I think uh, as you're stepping into managerial roles or even as you're um, a young um, newcomer, you focus a lot on managing up 
but you forget a lot about managing down and managing beside you. And for me, I'd say those were the most valuable relationships I've actually held on to over time. Of course, I certainly still lean into my former managers, my former directors, but the ones who are my biggest champions in what I've been able to achieve and also most vocal about what I've been able to provide for them, which also is a way of sponsoring me and my reputation, are, are my direct reports. Yeah, um, I, I, I do. I do appreciate that analogy. Um, it may shock you to learn that I am not against instant coffee <laughs> in terms of, of beverages. Um, but uh, no, I think that's great. We do, you know, when we speak with our, our customers who land that first role, um, we talk about how do you manage upwards? How do you how do you build horizontal champions? Um, and then we also talk about how do you help that person who's just one step behind you. Um, you know, your same title, maybe you started a cohort later in terms of your new company, but um, how do you how do you stand out and, and exercise your own leadership skills by, by helping them um, along the way? And so I think your comments are just a really excellent reminder that it's it's all directions um, when you do start in a role that that matter most uh, within an organization. So so I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, in terms of if we think about that context, um, you know, somebody is stepping into a role for brand new to the company. Um, maybe they've, you know, been through a boot camp, maybe not. Uh, what are some, what are some ways that they can, you know, once they've established that, that uh, they're, they're going to be starting and all of that, what are some ways that they can begin to assess the community that they're, that they're stepping into? Um, actually, you know what, take it even one step further back. We're interviewing. This is very helpful, very tactical. How can our customers think about while interviewing, evaluating a community that they might be joining? What can they look for? What can they ask about? Mm, yeah, that's, that's such a good question. Um, I, and I, I think that, yeah, as you're, as you're evaluating where you're stepping into, I think you have to do it with a lot of intention and care, care for yourself and how you are spending your time and whether or not it aligns with your own personal purpose and drive. A lot of times, you know, the work will always feel never ending. And so it's super important to feel as though you're working towards a bigger mission that's really aligned for you in order to keep that momentum going. Um, as you're interviewing, I think that it, it's always good to ask about um, not just core values, but stories behind them. A lot of times I, I love hearing about lived examples because they really do reaffirm what the value means to the organization. And it helps you determine whether or not it resonates for you. Um, you know, people might say authenticity is, um, maybe it means uh, showing up in a very honest way, even if it's brutally honest. And other times it could be showing up in a way that's very compassionate for others. It, it can be interpreted very differently. And so I'd say really drill down into figuring out whether or not the values are what you think that they mean. Over and above that, I think beyond the questions, I, I think it's always important to be really honest with yourself. A lot of times when you're going through interviews, you kind of get into a rhythm where you might want to say the things you think they want to hear, but you're really doing each other a disservice if you can't approach your interview honestly and say, here is how I show up. Here are my imperfections and weaknesses. And if we know that, we can work with each other much better and much more effectively. And so I think honesty is truly key there in ensuring that your own success is protected. I love that. So many good, um, um, good sound bites, and that I'll, I'll make sure I repeat them so people can catch them. Um, but that's great. That idea of being able to show up and um, identify these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses. It's such a, it's such a empowering concept, um, and it's a very empowering place to be. And what I love so much about what we help our customers with is how to figure out that language, how to do that for the first time when recognizing that. You know, you need a job, you want a job, you want to make this transition and you've been working hard 12 weeks, four weeks uh, at doing this, a lifetime at doing this. And so, you know, when push comes to shove, having that courage to in the interview, 
show up with your weaknesses right at the forefront. That's um, it's it's a, it's a, it's an inspiring it's an inspiring message and absolutely where we should be helping people get to for sure. Mm -hmm. um, what I also really liked about that response, just to make sure that we're, we're capturing all the different things. Um, when you're interviewing, ask about the values, drill down deeper, ask about the examples, ask about the stories, ask about how these values came to be to get that next level so that you can feel confident that the community that you're stepping into is aligned to your passion and your purpose. Does that sound right? Love Absolutely. It. I love it. That's great. Alex, I hope you're listening to this. You're going to you're going to love that <laughs> message. Um, good stuff. I think that's those are those are incredible tactics to, to carry forward. Um, so I'd love to I know I started with kind of mid funnel and then went back to the beginning. So I'm going to go back to mid funnel. Someone has started the company. They've done a fantastic job of evaluating. They know the community they're stepping into. Uh, what are the few first steps that they should take to be able to build relationships that will potentially evolve into a sponsorship? Mm, yeah, you know what, I, I feel like I'm living through that a lot, even right now, having just stepped into Yavaro. Um, but my advice, I, I'd say, is just really spend the time um, diving in and um, getting to know your peers. Um, as much as you're hoping for a sponsor to recognize um, your strengths that you're not observing, calling out the strengths of others is really empowering and enabling for those around you. It really, um, I think, compels people to actually support you within the community. Um, and then beyond that, I think really figure out ways in which you can add value quickly and meaningfully. Um, doing that really helps you figure out um, the people that I think um, will back you and champion you as an individual. And those are probably the ones you'd like to curate and sort of cherry pick to ask to be your sponsors over time. Um, I, uh, I, I love that because when I think about the superpower that our customers have going into the workplace, I was just speaking with, uh, with an individual about this uh, earlier in the week. The superpower is that when you start, you, you already know what they're talking about. They're telling you about SaaS, LTV, CAC, and you already heard these things. They're talking about an ICP and you're just like, I got this, I know this, which means you have an opportunity to now look outside of those concepts and spend your time doing other things because you're not spending your time necessarily learning those baseline fundamentals. You're coming into the workplace with them because you exited this or you're still part of the community, but you exited the program. Um, and so the superpower and the advantage that our customers have stepping into these roles is that they have the space um, to be able to now think about some of those other aspects, because otherwise you're spending all your time learning all the basics on the job. You don't necessarily have the same time to, to focus on those other um, aspects of building your career. So I think that's, I think that's an excellent, excellent uh, point and, and some great tactics and, and part of what makes our customers so, so super. Yeah, I love that so much. I, I think the fact that um, all of our members have spent time drilling down on those fundamentals mean that they have a real ability to add so much value to the people that they're working with. Um, and so I, I hope they feel super empowered to do so. Yeah, that's such a great, a great observation. Um, the reality is, like you said, you got to take time to think about these things. And it's hard work. Um, most folks come into the program and they haven't thought about these things yet. And so it's a, it's a journey to do so together. And that's, you know, why our community is so powerful. Bringing that to your peers in a new company is so special. So I love that observation because you're absolutely right. That is value. That is added value that you can bring right away. And we're always struggling to figure out what is that extra value that I can bring um, and I think that that's a really great call out because that's something that our customer base will also be able to, to bring forward. Awesome. I love it. Um, thank you, Jenna. Before I let everybody go, we ran our 30 minutes. I cannot believe that it's already been 30 minutes. Is there any advice or recommendations that you might want to share that you haven't already shared with our customer base so that for them to know how to create community for themselves? I think just quickly is to always, you know, make sure that you're creating a safe space for people for sharing and enable them to be vulnerable. Um, and first and foremost, always lead with curiosity as well as a desire to learn. Um, you know, 
not feeling like we know it all is what really truly promotes growth um, for ourselves as well as within a community and enables things to be totally world changing. Um, but yeah, I hope I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for your time, Donna. I loved it. It was great. Um, thank you, Jenna. Thank you to our customers who have made this conversation possible for everybody who joined today. Um, if you did enjoy this, then I invite you to join us next Thursday at 4 p.m. for our final conversation of this series. It will be with Sheila Fung, our program delivery manager, and in full transparency, my big sister and personal hero as we discuss continuous learning and perpetual growth. Uh, so much to learn from Sheila, from Jenna, from this entire group of women. So I really appreciate everybody who's taken the time to tune in.